day, Faithful. This is Faithful Everywhere. I am Cheska from Faithful Jesus Church World Harvest, and you are tuned in to our online worship and training service. We will start in a while, but for now, ishare mo muna ang ating live stream sa wall mo. Our online training is bound more exciting dahil pwede na tayong mag-interact with our speakers in real time. If you have questions or ideas, pwede pwede mong i-type sa comment section below. Let us also remember that tonight as a time for worship and part of our worship is giving to the church. For more details, you may go to faithfuljesuschurch.org slash giving. Now, let's give our praise to God and keep our attention on Him as we learn and grow in His Word. you are 
with my faith group weekly. I will use my talent to serve the ministry. As Jesus makes my heart pure, He makes my future secure. This year, I will trust in the faith for its blessings assured to stay. Support and pray for the mission of national transformation. April 2020 mission is Mighty Multiplication. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our friends and faithful all over the Philippines and all over the world. I am your Kuya Arvin, who will be one of your hosts in this wonderful webcast. Before anything, please press the heart button and please type on the comment section the location where you are listening and watching this webcast. We are hashtag faithful everywhere, encouraging you to love God and lead disciples. Our topic at hand is entitled, Disciplined Disciples. For discussion points, we have three parts. Yeah. For part one, it will be, what is a disciple? For part two, will be, discipler empowers the disciple. And last but not the least, for part three, it will be, disciples inspection. Here with me to discuss this topic are three other handsome and God-loving men. They are Kuya Marvin, Engineer Patrick, and Doc Toto. To kick off, let me pass the ball to Doc Toto. Hello. Good evening, so how are you? Yeah. Uh, Kuya Marvin, kumusta ka Kuya Marvin? Okay naman po, Pastor. Sa awan ng Diyos, safe naman po kami dito lahat. Oh, saan ka na? Uh, where are you broadcasting from? Uh, from GMA Cavite po, Pastor. Oh, sa so mga taga GMA Cavite, binabati namin kayo ng isang napakagandang araw, gabi at umaga. Uh, Kuya Patrick, Dear Patrick, uh, where are you broadcasting from? Dito po ngayon sa Muntinlupa City. Okay naman po dito pero visible pa rin po yung mga pulis po may mga sundalo pa rin po pero okay naman po lahat. Yeah. Ikaw naman po yung Arvin. Kamusta ka naman? Where are you uh, webcasting or Hello. broadcasting from? Hello po. Uh, nasa San Pedro, Laguna po ako. Bumabati po ako sa mga kababayan ko dyan sa San Pedro, Laguna. Okay. So kami po ay magkakiwalay ng mga lugar. Uh, ako po ay sa Binyang, so we'd like to greet everyone in Binyang po. Good evening. Pati rin sa mga taga Santa Rosa, Kalamba, at sa mga karatig po na Laguna. Uh, Kuya Patrick, pakipati mo naman ang lahat ng mga taga Muntinlupa. 
Pinabati po namin ang lahat ng mga nanonood sa Muntinlupa City. Sana okay lang po kayo. Mag-ingat po lagi. Ayan. Kuya Marvin, ikaw naman. Pakibati mo mga taga-kabite. Ayan, binabati ko po ang lahat ng mga sumusubaybay at nanonood sa Cavite, iba't ibang bayan ng Cavite. Ayan, keep safe po sa lahat at uh, sana marami tayong matutunan ngayong gabi. Kanina napalita mo sa akin na ah, mukhang umuulan dyan. Opo, medyo, medyo malakas pa ang ulan kanina pero ngayon po okay na po lahat. Oo, oh, medyo malamig pa ngayon o medyo uminit oh, ulit? <laughs> medyo mainit na po dito eh. <laughs> Kuya Arvin, kamusta naman kayo sa San Pedro? Um, okay naman po. Medyo lumuwag na po yung, um, yung uh, po dito, checkpoint. Pero we will still require quarantine pass para po sa mga malls like uh, Robinson's. Yan. Oh. Okay, huh? oh, sa inyo, engineer, kamusta naman dyan? Sa lugar okay dito? naman po. Mahigpit lang po sa mga palengke. Kasi po doon po medyo nag-gather po yung mga tao eh. Marami po talagang namimili, lalo na po nag-GCQ po tayo ngayon. So hopefully, uh, wala na po ma-infect, wala na po magkaroon ng COVID para po maging okay na rin po lahat. Dito sa amin sa Pinyang, eh, medyo maluwag ng onte. Kasi yun naman, Kuya Marvin, sa Cavite, kapasta naman ang lagay dyan? Uh, medyo mahigpit din po dito. Kailangan po ng quarantine pass para makalabas. May araw lang din po na pinapayagan lumabas. Kaya medyo doble ingat po talaga. So para makapagtuloy tayo sa ating webcast, magbababay muna ako kay Junior Patrick. Mamaya, kita tayo. And also kay Kuya Arvin. We also... Now, Kuya Marvin, uh, sa yes. discuss natin ngayong gabi, handang-handa ka na ba? Yeah. Very so, excited na po uh, na mag-share ng Word of God. So hindi ko na patatagalin, ipapasa ko na sa yung bola. Saluin mo yung bola ngayon. Okay po. <laughs> okay. Ayan, magandang gabi po mga ka-faithful. Ako nga po pala si Kuya Marvin and thank you for this opportunity to share with you this topic about discipleship. Ayan, for this topic, we will learn about three things. Uh, the definition of a disciple, what it takes to be a disciple of Christ, and what are the goals of an effective disciple. So, yun. Uh, ready na po ba lahat ng kinik? Ayan, kung ready na po, type nyo lang dyan sa comment section. Ayan, kung ready na po lahat. Okay, let's start. Ayan, according to our head pastor, Dr. Otto Bustillo, a disciple is a disciplined learner and follower of Christ. Dating ko po yan ha. Ang definition daw po ng disciple ay disciplined learner and follower of Christ. Ayan, hindi daw dapat tayo basta follower lang to be called a disciple. Dapat din, andun yung continuous desire natin to learn and to be equipped. At paano, ba, paano nga ba tayo mas matututo ng word of God? By hearing, reading, and putting it into action. Pero last time po, meron po ang nabasa. Gusto ko na share. Uh, meron daw best way to study the Bible. Alam niyo po ba kung paano? Ayan, best way to, to study the Bible. Meron bang ganun? Alam niyo po ba kung ano yun? Ayan, ito po yung answer. You look in it. May joke lang po. <laughs> Ayan. Ayan, move na po. What it takes to be a disciple of Christ. Ayan, maupasa po natin yan sa Luke 14 verse 27. If anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Sabi dyan, carry his cross. Mamaya, babalikan natin yan. Ha? Continue tayo sa Luke 14 verse uh, 33. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Ayan. Sabi dyan, we should carry our cross. Ayan. Ano nga ba ibig sabihin na? Meaning, we should commit our whole life and even willing to die in order to follow Jesus. Parang medyo hard yung dating, no? But if we really want to follow Jesus, we should deny ourselves and give everything to Him. Now, kung babalikan na natin yung sa verse 26, same chapter, sabi doon, If anyone who comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, 
his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life. He cannot be my disciple. Ayan, hindi naman literal na magagalit ka sa family mo. No? Pero you're deciding that Jesus will be your priority above anyone else. Ayan. Okay ba tayo doon? Ayan. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer says, Christianity without discipleship is Christianity without Christ. Now, ulitin ko po yun ha. Christianity without discipleship is Christianity without Christ. Ayan. Hindi pala natin matatawag ang sarili natin as Christian if we are not a disciple of Jesus. Ayan. Ngayon, alam na natin kung anong ibig sabihin ng discipleship and what it takes to be a disciple. Ngayon, paano naman natin malalaman if we are an effective disciple of Jesus? Ayan. Listed here are the five goals of an effective disciple. Okay? Number one, an effective disciple should be matured. Take note, mature. Number two, an effective disciple can minister to others. Number three, involved in missions. Number four, an effective disciple is also an effective mentor. Take note of that. And number five, a role model. Okay. Actually, limang M po yan. Mature, minister, missions, mentor, and a model. And as we all know, tayo mga Christians are ambassador of Christ. Na kahit saan tayo pumunta, dapat natin isipin na nakadikit, nakadikit na sa buong pagkataon natin yung meaning and integrity of Jesus. Yan, lagi natin tatandaan yan. Uh, natandaan po ba yung lima? Yan, may kusip po tayo mamaya. Yan, those are the five goals of an effective disciple. Hindi ko na po i-explain, explain Gusto ko lang po mag-share ng minting testimony about my journey in discipleship. Yeah. I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior about 10 years ago. And after that, I became a disciple of Jesus. As well as a disciple of my spiritual mentor, Rhea Joseph Nettis. And she yung nag sa akin to be, more, to be more mature spiritually as I continue to follow Jesus. Habang tumatagal, mas marami akong natutunan, may mga struggles, lessons na napukulot along the way, hanggang mas mag-ignas na din ikot ako uh, to serve and to minister to others. I grow in my ministry, I joined in missions, nag-share ng word of God kung saan-saan, and even have my own disciples. Ayan. Shout out nga pala sa mga disciples ko dyan, nanonood. Ayan. Alam nyo na kung sino kayo? Ayan. Kung meron ng akong gusto kong i-share sa inyo sa lahat ng natutunan ko about this activity is that all the doubts, uh, trust, pains, happiness, encouragement, tears, roller coaster of emotions talaga. And all of that are part of the discipleship process. Magdadaanan mo talaga lahat yan and it makes you stronger and more effective disciple of Jesus. Okay? And for the next part, let me pass the mic to Kuya Arvin. Kapatid na Arvin, take it away. Uh, kamusta ka naman, Kuya Marvin? Kamusta ka personally? Ayan, okay naman, bro. Uh, medyo okay, safe naman tayo dito. Wala namang nagkakasakit. Wow. Sanay na sanay ka na, ha? Para ka nagtuturo lang ng Sunday school, ha? May, may mga props. Oo, oh, sanay na sanay sa mga bata, eh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, be, uh, thank you for that very great start, Kuya Marvin. No? So, yan, before, bago pa tayo mawala sa topic, sige, let me, pro- uh, let me proceed with this part 2. Thank you, Kuya Marvin. Yan, for the part 2, yan, before po tayo mag-start, uh, let me just remind everyone na uh, if you have question or meron po kayong um, mga suggestion or gustong i-share, you can type it on the comment section. So, later on, meron kaming... Uh, Q&A part, so pwede nyo pong itanong yung mga gusto nyo itanong sa atin. Okay? So, sige, without further ado, uh, let's proceed to part 2. The part 2 will be a disciples empowers the disciple. Yan. Sabi dyan, take note, Christians who are not accountable to a discipler may lead to a crash, which is brought about by isolation, emotional strain, or loss of perspective. 
Yeah, I can still remember um, before I went to Faithful Jesus Church with my, when I was with my uh, previous church. Yeah, um, before kasi wala kaming definite uh, discipleship system. And I, I find it na yun, yun, ito yung nangyari sa kanya. It, lead, it led to a crash. Yeah, so I, I experienced isolation and I experienced uh, emotional strain and loss of perspective. So parang there came a time na pag nawala ako sa church, walang someone na mag-reach out sa'yo. Walang magtatanong kung kamusta ka, ganyan. Basta ikaw, nawala ka lang. Parang ganyan. So, uh, it is highly recommended for a Christian to have a discipler. And as well as, syempre, magkaroon ka rin ng sarili mong disciples. So, in order for you na hindi mo na ma-experience yung, uh, yung sinasabi dito na symptoms like isolation, emotional strain, and loss of perspective. Yan. So, next, a discipler empowers the disciple. Sabi dyan, a discipler empowers the disciple through God's word and spirit with confidence, power, and discipline. So let me um, uh, compare between a discipler and a mentor. Kasi, yes, tinatawag nating mentor ang discipler. But the difference is, actually, anyone can be a mentor. Baba, you're a coach ng isang basketball team. You're actually a mentor. You're a mentor of a sales, uh, sales industry, or you're a manager, diba? You're a mentor. But the difference is, um, sometimes a mentor, they do it because syempre may, may kapalit, like may allowance, meron silang salary, but the discipler will actually do it without anything in return. Ayan. So, ayun yung maganda doon. And sabi, sabi dyan, di ba, um, a discipler is actually guided and founded by God's word with the spirit, with confidence, love, and self-control. So, ito yung mga magandang uh, evidence if you are guided and founded by the spirit of God. You have the uh, love and self-control as a disciple. So, yun yung mga evidence. So, sabi sa 2 Timothy 1.7 or uh, uh, ESV version, sabi dyan, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Ayun nga yun. So, if you are guided and founded by the Spirit of God, then He did not give you a spirit of fear, but He gave you a power, love, and self-control. Okay? So, yun yung mga evidence. Okay. Once again, guys, I, I remind ko lang, if you have question, you can type it on the comment section. So, kung may mga gusto kayo i-share or uh, may, mga, may mga opinions kayo, you can actually type it on the comment section. So, later on, we will accommodate all of it. Ayan. So, ayan, it's just so, ref to, from Teacher Mitch, it's just so refreshing to hear testimonies of the great blessings of being involved in discipleship, di ba? From our very own pastor, di ba? So, I hope, guys, kayo rin uh, mag-engage din kayo. You can type it on the comment section. Ayan, sabi ni Ate Jessamine Estor Paler, Discipler, do discipleship for free. Actually, yeah, very good si Ate Amin dyan. Actually, sometimes hindi lang for free. Sometimes yung discipler nag-shell out din ng money. Ayan, later, um, kasi let me tell you a story this pandemic. So, I have one disciple na unfortunately... Um, nagkaroon ng illness yung kanyang mom so tumawag siya sa akin and then he was crying, yun nga kuya di ko na alam gagawin um, kahit yung mama ko na pinunghugutan namin ng lakas, eh gusto na sumuko in life sabi niya ganun, syempre as a discipler, yun you feel um, feel mo yung compassion, di ba? you feel accountable hindi mo pwedeng pabayaan tong uh, disciple mo, so yan I ask for help and then I personally help as well, yun even if sometimes uh, kahit wala ka na sometimes you have to give out for that disciple of yours, diba? So, that's a disciple. Yeah, thank you pa sa mga nag-engage. So, we hope meron pa po kaming mabasa later. So, sige, let's proceed po. Sabi ni Rick Lewis, a mentor of Mentoring Matters book, said, Empowering relationships take people from a place of inner weakness where they felt powerless and overwhelmed to a place of inner strength where they feel able to respond constructively to a situation. So, um, ang maganda po sa disciple and uh, disciple, disciple and disciple relationship, it is a empowering relationship. So, uh, I, uh, ako po ay suggest and I recommend if you're a disciple, you should focus dun sa, sa strength ng iyong disciple and you have to minimize the weakness. So, huwag mo siyang pipilitin, huwag mo siyang pupush na, hindi, kailangan mong ayusin yung strength mo, ayong weakness mo, kailangan mong galingan dyan. Um, pwede siyang ma-frustrate. So, what you have to do is maximize the strength and then let others, kung may, isa, may iba kang disciple na strength niyo, witness niyo, isa mong disciple, let him do it. Yeah. Or, or her, kung babae po siya. Okay? So, sige po, let's proceed po. Uh, a disciple deals with winner, inner weakness, and strength. Yan. Ito po yung mga
dapat i-deal ng isang disciple sa kanyang disciple. So, number one, sabi dyan, inner weakness is characterized by timidity, double-mindedness, anxiety, hesitancy, procrastination, and self-doubt. And po yung mga dapat i-deal ng isang um, disciple when it comes to weakness. While this, the other one is inner strength. Yan. Yan. So, is, uh, inner strength is characterized by confidence, endurance, patience, determination, hope, and courage. Ito naman po yung mga uh, dapat i-maximize natin as a disciple. Yan. So, sabi dyan, um, ito po yung formula on how to boost your disciple strength. Sabi dyan, 10% input plus 90% affirmation is equals to 100% action. So, paano how to engage or how to boost your disciple? Sabi dyan, 10% input. Ito po yung um, mag- mag- mag-share ka sa disciple mo ng knowledge or personal experiences and the other 90% will be affirmation. Ito po yung um, you encourage him or her. Sabi mo na uh, I know you can do it. I, I trust in you. I believe in you. Alam po ang makakaya mo yan. And hindi kita iiwan dyan na ganyan-ganyan lang. Okay? So from there, it will lead to 100% action. Yan. Napakaganda po, di ba? So this one naman po, there we have two types of empowerment. So if you're if you're going to empower your disciple, ito po yung two types of empowerment. Number one is interpersonal empowerment. So in, in interpersonal empowerment po, it's between you and your disciple. So yun nga, you're sharing your personal experiences, your mga past mistakes mo, share mo sa kanya, yung mga knowledge na nakuha mo, ayun yung mga issue share mo sa kanya. And the other type will be Holy Spirit empowerment. Ito naman po yung when it comes to yung mga inner, for example, may nafe-feel siya kay forgiveness, and, and ang part naman po ng Holy Spirit is i-take away yun, yun, uh, maalisin po yun, and palitan po ng Holy Spirit ni Lord. And palitan po ng love, kung may meron siyang mga hatred or anger sa puso niya, ayun naman po yung part ng Holy Spirit. Okay, so uh, once again, interpersonal and Holy Spirit empowerment. So ito po yung last verse na i-share ko sa inyo, sabi dito sa 1 Corinthians uh, 3, 6-9, NLT version. Sabi, I planted the seed in your hearts and Apollos watered it, uh, but it was God who made it grow. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one uh, who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose and both will be rewarded for their own hard work. For we are both God's workers and you are God's field and you are God's building. So, um, yung story ko po dyan, when I was in college, yun, I, we intentionally went to a mall sa isang uh, food court, and then naghanap kami ng student, high school student, na share ng gospel. So, nag-share kami, ng, may nakita kami dalawang magkaibigan na dalawang guy na high school student. And in-approach namin, we shared the gospel, and then we invited them to Campus Suite of Destiny. Yan, seg- segue ko lang po, sa mga, may mga kabataan po dyan, meron po tayong mga hangouts every Saturday. Antay lang po kayo ng mga uh, announcement, pwede nyo po silang i-join. So, fortunately, one of them, um, join the Campus Suite of Destiny. Ayan. And then, syempre, I discipled him na rin. Kasi, syempre, andun na rin naman siya, no? And then, um, sabi nga dyan, di ba, I, I planted the seed, eh. And then, someone watered it. Yun. Ayun yung maganda doon. And sabi naman dyan, it's not important kung sino yung nag-plant or sino yung nag-water. Ang pinakamalaga sa lahat, the Lord made it grow. So, I, I saw the maturity nung sinaran ko ng gospel na yon. Nakita ko parang siya nag-mature in all aspects. Sa spiritual niya and as a person. So, ayun po yung napakamagandang um, uh, design ni Lord when it comes to discipleship. Yan. So, for the next topic, let me give the floor to Engineer Patrick. Hi, Kuya Patrick. Kuya Arvin, parang ang sarap talaga sa feeling, no? Yung parang may nag empower sa sa'yo, merong nag encourage sa sa'yo. No, parang meron talagang taong yeah, na Kaya importante talaga yung uh, sa topic mo, yung sinare mo sa atin about uh, empowering uh, our disciples. So, Meron talagang mga kabataan, lalo na ngayon, na kailangan na kailangan talaga na meron talagang merong isang taong maniwala sa kanila. Kaya doon sila nabubust. So thank you for sharing that, Kuya RV. Okay, so let's proceed. So ang topic naman natin ngayon ay about disciples inspection. So ako, I'm handling 11 disciples. So bawat isa sa kanila kailangan natin uh, tanungin. Uh, kailangan natin silang kamustahin kung ano na ba yung pinagagawa nila sa buhay. Lalo na ngayong pandemic, uh, marami sa ating mga disciple na nag-aaral, 
uh, marami sa ating mga disciple na nagtatrabaho, okay, so kailangan natin kamustahin. So, sabi dito ni Ate Jessamine, um, what is important is that God let the seeds grow. Yes, tama. Kailangan si Lord talaga yung magpapalago, okay, ng ating mga pananampalataya or faith natin sa kanila. So, disciples inspection, sabi dito, if you don't inspect, you cannot expect. Totoo. Kasi kung di natin tatanungin ang ating mga dinidisciple, okay, huwag tayo mag- uh, mag-expect na sas- nagsas- magsasalita sila. Dapat ganun yung mindset natin. Dapat alam natin kung paano natin sila i-handle, paano natin sila tatanungin, paano yung timing natin, kung paano sila kamustahin, anong oras yung wala silang ginagawa, kailan yung discipleship time natin. So importante na magkaroon tayo ng oras para makamusta natin sa- sila. Sabi sa... Uh, hello po kay Ate Jean, uh, here in Boracay, we're watching, okay? Hello po sa Indian, sa Boracay, ang layo na na ating naabot. So let's proceed, sabi sa Genesis 4.9. Ayan, then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied, am I brother's keeper? So even God, the Lord of Lord, as nangangamusta, nasa nang kapatid mo, kinakamusta niya, nasa si Abel. So tayo, As a discipler, we must know how to ask, mag-inspect kung ano yung mga nangyayari po sa ating mga dini-disciple. So, bago po mag-proceed, huwag po natin makakalimutan mag-comment kung meron po tayong mga tanong at later po meron po tayong time para po sagutin ang ating mga questions. So, areas po na dapat po nating itanong sa ating mga disciple ay tatlo po. Three, huwag po natin kaalimutan yung L, C, and D. So una po is life. Kamusay natin ang kanilang mga buhay-buhay. And then si Christ. Ang pangatlo po, discipline. Okay? So unahin po natin inspect ang kanilang life. Sabi sa 3 John chapter 1 verse 2, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. So we must ask How are you? Yun lang, simpleng yun lang po. Kamusta ka? Ngayong, ngayong gabi, tinatanong po namin kayo, kamusta po kayo? Kamusta na po ang inyong buhay? Ano na po yung mga nangyayari sa inyo? Lalo na po yung sa ating mga dinidisciple na parang hindi na po nagpaparamdam. Magkaroon po tayo ng time to ask them, How are you, anak? How are you, my disciple? How are you? Ito po yung pwede nating i-check sa kanilang mga buhay. Kamusta na po ba ang kanilang mga kalusugan? Nakakain pa po ba sila ngayong pandemic? Kanila pong mga kabuhayan? Kanila pong pag-aaral? Masaya pa po ba sila? Dapat marunong po tayo kung ano po yung mga dapat natin itanong sa kanilang mga buhay. Okay? Pangalawa po na pwede po nating inspect sa kanila ay si Christ. Importante po na meron alam rin po nila kasi Jesus Christ ang center ng kanilang buhay. Sabi po sa Galatians 2.20, I have died but Christ lives in me. And now I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave His life for me. So ito po yung pwede nating itanong. Who's the center of your life? The faithful. Who is the center of your life right now? Trabaho pa ba ang ating na, na pumapagit na sa ating buhay? Pag-aaral pa rin ba pumapagit na sa ating mga buhay? Ano pa po ba ating pinagkakaabalahan ngayon? Nasaan na po si Jesus Christ sa ating puso? Sabi po ni Dietrich Bonifer said, When Christ calls a man, he bids, in, he bids him come and die. So we must know, pag nag-unite na po tayo at si Jesus Christ, accept him, our personal Lord and Savior. Wala na pong ibang pwedeng pumasok na ano mong pwede pong pagkaabalahan kundi si Jesus Christ lamang po. Okay? So, yun po yung the, una, life po, pangalawa po ay Christ. And then last po, pwede po natin i-check sa kanila ay discipline. Huwag po natin kakalimutan na tayo po as Christian, meron po tayong mga spiritual discipline na inaayos po sa ating mga buhay. Meron po tayo dyan mga uh, dapat gawin kung saan po mas lumalago po tayo dyan. So, sabi po sa look 14 uh, verse 27 and anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me 
cannot be my disciple. So, right now, ngayon pong gabi, tinatanong po namin kayo, are you still growing ka faithful? Lumalago pa po ba tayo sa ating kanya-kanyang spiritual life? A disciplined disciple is both faithful to Christ and fruitful in discipleship. Hindi po pwedeng naniniwala lang po tayo kay Jesus Christ. Dapat po nakikita rin po ng ibang tao na lumalago rin po tayo sa ating mga kanya-kanyang ginagawa para sa kanya. Nandiyan po ang ating mga faith group. May oras po tayo, pa, maraming oras po tayo ngayon sa ating mga discipleship group. Dapat po bigyan po natin ng time ito. So ito po yung pwede natin i-check sa, sa ating pong mga dinidisciple. Ito po yung mga di- spiritual discipline. Unang-una po, huwag po natin kakalimutan, i-check sa kanila, ay yung worship. Nagka-quiet time pa po ba ang ating mga dinidisciple? Nagkakaroon pa po ba sila ng time to read their Bible? Meron pa po ba silang corporate worship? At nakakapagkaloob pa po ba sa mga nagtatrabaho? Isa po yan, so pwede nating way para i-worship si God. Pangalawa po na pwede po natin i-check sa kanila ay yung discipleship. Nasaan na po ba ang kanilang mga people engagement? Nafa-follow up pa po ba natin yung mga disciples po natin na well, hindi na po nagparamdam? Yung mga faith group po natin na nilagay po natin sa mga iba't ibang um, social media platform para makamusta po sila, nandun pa po ba sila? Isa po na pwede po natin i-check, lagi po natin i-check kung nasa na po ang ating mga dinidisciple. Pangatlo po, missionship. Okay, so isa rin po na pwede po natin i-check sa kanila kung nasa na po yung ministry service na ginagawa po nila. Nakakapag-lead pa po ba ang ating mga disciple ng mga faith group? Or meron pa, rin po, meron pa po ba silang nagagawang mga missions exposure or community service? Marami pong paraan para po makapagkaroon magkaroon tayo ng missionship. Magkaroon, ma, magkaroon po tayo ng mission sa iba't ibang uh, lugar. So isa rin po na pwede natin i-check sa nila kung nagagawa pa po ba nila ito. And last po, leadership. Marami pong paraan para po sa uh, magkaroon po tayo ng training. Every Monday po, meron pong faithful uh, in, uh, FLI sa E-class po. 7pm po yan, huwag po natin kakalimutan. Marami po rin tayong mga coaching uh, part sa ating pong mga uh, dito po sa ating Faithful Jesus Church webcast, katulad po ng ganito. Lead group po. Okay? So, nasa, yung leadership po, kailangan po ma- ma- ma-check po natin sa anila kung hanggang saan po yung kanilang mga inililid. Okay po? So, to lead us further discussion, is Dr. Toto again. Yes, good evening, Engineer Patrick. Yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, uh, well, God is so good. And uh, as we continue to uh, have this discussion, I would like to ask all of our listeners and all those who are watching to please type your questions on the comment section. So would you like us to call Puya Arvin and also Puya Marvin? Yeah, completo na ang Voltus 5. Kulang na na ng isa, lima na tayo. So tama-tama kasi may isa tayo kasama kanina sa Ibis. So lima nga talaga tayo. So, uh, medyo siguro batiin muna natin mga mga listeners po natin and uh, mga nag-hello sa atin. So, batiin natin si Ate Lilian. Yan. Lilian. 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 Uh, si Kuya Jason also. Ang tapos na na. Okay, Jason. 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 That's Kuya Jason. And also si Ate G. Nixon. Yan, sa mga kay ulit. Uh, don't worry don't mga discussions meron tayong mga rebroadcast for this so uh, as we are discussing kanina uh, there are things that came to my mind also as we discuss and also some questions na may mga nagtatanong na sa atin so let's start with this first question let's start from uh, may pinadala na question ng aking magandang asawa. So the question, Kuya Arvin, pakibasa mo? Yan, Kuya Arvin. Why are we allergic? Allergic. Why are we allergic of having, having accountability? Accountability. Yan. Sige, pag-usapan natin ngayon. Accountability is a big word. <laughs> parang sa halip po, parang hindi naman na allergic. Pero minsan nahihiya po kasi 
Si Kay Alpair. Ang importante po talaga yung in-expect natin sila. Sila. Yan po para sa akin. Yan po para sa akin. Marvin, meron ka bang experience na parang minsan sa decipher mo eh, parang na-feel mo na wow, parang okay, okay, ring siya. Kailang parang medyo nasasakal ako ng onte, parang naging allergic na ako sa kanya. Was there an experience na gano'n kay Marvin? Sa akin ko personally, wala naman na po ako. Hindi mo nang po ako na-experience. Pero sa mga decipher na nakaka-experience na gano'n. Payo ko lang na take time to understand. Kasi kung ano man yung mga nakifeel nila, there's a reason. There's always a reason behind that. Kuya Arvin, may masasabi ka ba with regards to this question? Yes po. Um, I, I actually know some people po na pagka, pag inaalok mo po na, po na uh, gusto mo ba maging part, part ng great group or discipleship, sometimes yes, sila na nila ayaw nila ayaw. One of the main reasons po nila is ayaw po nila nung ayaw po nila ayaw po nila ayaw po nila ayaw po yung mga reasons nila reasons nila to be one of the people of this discipleship and discipleship and So, kanina may nabanggit si Kuya Patrick na statement, if you do not expect, inspect, you cannot expect. So, pag-usapan natin to before we go to the next questions. Uh, totoo, di ba? Expectations. Meron tayong mga dream sa mga dini-disciple natin. But again, if there's no inspection, mahirap mag-expect. So, Uh, Kuya Marvin, sa experience mo, ano masasabi mo tungkol sa statement na ito? Uh, tama po yan kasi, kasi hindi, hindi po natin mag-assume kung ano yung nangyayari sa mga nangyayari natin. natin. Kung tayo mismo, kung tayo lang tayo sa, sa kanila. Uh, engineer, ano masasabi mo? Kanina may napakit ka na ito. Can you expound more on this? Importante po na marunong po talaga tayong mag- anong nang tama para hindi po sila ma-offend. Dapat meron po tayong uh, pinipiling mga salita para po masabi natin sa kanila kung paano po natin sila makakamusta. Kasi madalas po talaga may mga disciple po na hindi po talaga magsasalita yan hanggat di po tinatanong. Kwento ko lang po yung isa ko pong disciple. Um, matagal ko na po siyang inahandle. Matagal ko na po siyang inaalagaan. Pero parang naisip ko po na bakit hindi pa po siya nagmi-ministry. Nung tinanong ko po siya one time, bro, gusto mo ba mag-ministry? Sagot po niya sa akin, kuya, matagal ko na pong gusto, hindi ko po alam kung paano. Di ba po, may time po talaga na magkaroon po tayo ng time kung paano po natin sila uh, mapapa, uh, papasalita ko ano po yung gusto nilang sabihin kasi inaantay na lang po pala niya ako tanungin kung paano ko po siya tutulungan mag-ministry. So ayun po, nasa ano na po siya ngayon, Digisciple. Oh, good. Uh, okay. Kuya Arvin, sa sa'yo, ano yung madalas mong ini-inspect sa mga Digisciple mo? Well, I usually uh, tinatunong ko po sila yung kalagayan po nila, especially sa family. Kasi Napakahirap po na posin din ng ating disciples. For example, um, sige, mag-join ka sa FLI. Mag-join ka sa ganito activity. And hindi mo man lang tinanong, kamusta ba siya personally? Kamusta ba yung, uh, ano ba mga nangyayari sa family niya? Uh, are they in good condition? So how do you expect na mag attention ng mga activities na yon? How do you expect na susunod siya sa'yo kung siya mismo meron siya mga kinakarap na challenges? Ayan. So ito, hindi to question. Engineer, para sa sa'yo to. Pakibasa mo nga. From Ate Mitch, um, sabi po niya, well said, Engineer Pat, ang tamang tanong ay makakakuha ng tamang sagot. Apo. Uh, <laughs> at minsan, yung tanong na yan ay kinakailangan maging creative tayo. Sometimes Opo. we need to be so direct, but sometimes we need to beat around the bush to get the actual answer. So another question. By the way, before anything, uh, please keep asking your questions para at least maklarify natin yung mga bagay na nasa isip natin na gusto natin itong 
when it comes to discipleship. Okay, so let's uh, have this question. Kuya Marvin, pakibasa mo nga yung question na to. Uh, question from Elise. What happens if the disciple is not honest in answering the questions of his disciple? Ayan. <laughs> so, papano pag hindi siya honest? Honest. Kuya Marvin, papano nga? Uh, sa akin kasi, para sa akin kasi pag hindi honest yung, yung dine-disciple mo. Sa tingin ko may something, may trust issue, pwede may trust issue siya, na ayaw niyang i-share, kaya iniiba na lang niya yung sagot niya. Para sa akin, ang, ang pwedeng gawin doon is, Make yourself as a trustworthy person first. Para yung disciple mo, may tiwala sa may tiwala sa iyo na kaya niyang i-share lahat ng gusto niya i-share sa iyo. Kasi nararamdaman niya na ikaw mismo trustworthy ka. We are with. Masasabi mo. Um as a person, sometimes nakikita po natin yan eh pag ang person um, hindi niya sinasabi ng totoo. Sometimes the way he speak the way he act or yung gestures po niya, nakikita po natin yan. If he's if he's, if he's, if he's or her not answering the question honestly, yun. So what you have what you have to do is um, you have to ask more question. Na sometimes ma- makikita mo or mauhuli mo siya na he's not answering or he she's not answering the right um, the right answer na hinahanap mo sa kanya. So what what you have to do um, once again ipapangalawahan ko po yung sinabi ni Kuya Marvin. You have to um, Kailangan may paramdam sa kanya na you are a trustworthy person. Make make him or her feel comfortable na mag-share sa iyo ng uh, mga pinagdadaanan niya or mga secrets niya. And sometimes you as a person or a disciple, um you have to share then para ma-feel niya na ay hindi lang pala ako yung nagkukuwento ng mga mga sa loobin ko. Pati si Kuya mismo or si Ate mismo, nag-share din ng mga sa loobin niya. So I think pwede ko rin i-share sa kanya yung nararamdaman ko. Okay. Um Ginner, any uh, anything that you like to share about this question? Para sa akin naman po, um, when we ask them, huwag po natin i-take na nagsisamaling agad sila. Kasi in the first place, bigyan po natin sila ng benefit of the doubt mo muna. Kasi nagpaya po sila nagsishare kasi gusto lang po muna nila ilabas. And then after po nila mag-share, that is the time man that we can investigate, okay? So, magkaroon tayo ng time para alamin talaga kung ano yung totoo. Kasi, kaya po natin sa Trinity Disciple, kasi hindi, natin, hindi, hindi natin tingin sa kanila masama. Okay? So, tignan po muna natin kung ano po, tignan muna natin kung ano yung sinasabi nila. Then, after sila mag-sala, kung ano nilang i-share sa atin, pwede rin po tayo magkaroon ng ating personal investigation. So, okay. so magkaroon po tayo ng time para tanungin yung kanilang mga circle of friends kung ito po po talagang sinabi nila ay totoo. Kung hindi po dun, pwede po natin sila i-confront. That, that's the time na pwede po natin sabihin ay parang hindi ito yung sinabi ng yung kaibigan. Okay? So para sa akin po, importante po talaga na marunong po tayong magtanong. Hindi lang po sa kanya, pati po sa mga taong pumapaligid sa kanya. Parang sa pagiging disciple, you must have two skills. One Opo. is the skill of a counselor. Yes. Maparamdam sila sa kanila na mahal na mahal sila. But sometimes we need to have the skill of an investigator para malaman talaga kung ito talaga. Meron kong comment si uh, Kuya Joseph. So uh, sometimes we need to know the language of our disciple in order to connect with them. Sa mga dinidisciple natin ngayon, ano yung kanilang love language? Diba? Merong touch, merong, um, ano ba yung ano? May words, may gift, merong uh, service, tapos time. merong uh, affirmation time. Okay. So sa inyo, ano yung usual sa mga dinidisciple ninyo? What are the usual love language that they have so that you can connect to them? Yeah, anyone, anyone could share. So, Para sa akin. Ah, sige, 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 <laughs> sige, ako, sige. sige, ako na po muna. So, most of the time po, um, quality time and words of affirmation po. So, usually, gusto nila yung mas may uh, maraming times na nakakausap kayo. 
meron nga times na sometimes after your discipleship sabi nila sana lagi na lang ano sana everyday na lang discipleship parang ganyan so they're asking uh, for more of time from you quality time tapos sometimes they want recognition using your words yun, na parang hey, you're doing great sa ginagawa mo to so definitely yun po quality time and words and affirmation so karamihan ganun ang uh, within your sphere of influence sa iyo naman kay Marvin ano yung madalas na love language nila Uh, siguro yung pinaka-common sa kanila is time, time talaga. Kasi napapansin ko sa mga disciples ko, parang parang ako rin sila eh. Very ano sila eh, very uh, emotional pagdating sa mga na, nararamdaman nila. Yan. Kaya madalas ko silang kausapin mo ano pang ano. Para magkaroon ako ng time sa bawat isa sa kanila. Para may labas nila ako ano yung gusto nilang sabihin. By the way, just to put perspective, now, whenever we say that uh, we are their disciples and they are disciples, and in actuality, they are disciples of Jesus. Kaya lang tayo lang yung parang naging ni Andrew Shepherd, sinalagaan natin sila, and we are accountable to the Great Shepherd. So in here, ikaw naman, ang matasabi mo dito. Para sa Andrew, most of them words of affirmation. Hmm. Po, mostly nang na-handle ko po, medyo mas bata sa akin. Iba po nag pa. So, I think most of them need po ng um, encouragement. Ayan. Good job! Ayan po yung mga gusto nilang naririnig. Ah, magaling ka talaga. Kaya mo yung exam mo. Okay, so para saan po, halos lahat po sila. Parang work of affirmation po yun. Okay, next question from Pastor Syrah. How can we check on our disciples without offending them? Minsan okay. diba parang feeling, di ba na parang nakaka-offend. So how do we check on them without offending them? Ano ang style mo? Personal style mo? Parang Ako ba, ba, Pastor? Go. Uh, for me kasi, ang, kaya sila na-offend dahil minsan insensitive tayo sa mga words na ginagamit natin. Ah, uh, para hindi sila ma-open, hayaan natin na sila yung mag-share sa atin. Ano talaga yung na-feel nila? Paano yun? Ask general questions muna. Yung mga questions na, oy, yung kumusta na sa family mo sa pero hindi yung personal agad. Hayaan mong siya yung mag-brought up noon. Yeah, yun yung way para hindi siya yung ma-offend sa words natin kasi siya mismo yung mag-share sa atin. So yung style mo, Kuya Marvin, is umiikot ka muna, Pilipino yung Pilipino talaga. Apo. You get a push. And then later, pag nakuha mo na yung loob, yun na. Apo, parang ganun po. Hindi ganun yun eh. Pag nakuha mo na yung loob, magsasalita rin naman yun. Okay. Apo. Marvin, <laughs> how do you do? What's your yeah. personal style? Yeah, thank you Ate Sai for that question. So, so ulitin natin no, how can we check on our disciples without offending them? So, how whenever we ask, make it make it sound um soft. Huwag niyo pong huwag niyo pong ipa-feel na you are bossy or bossy make them feel na they are really obliged parang ganoon. So, um there are disciples na actually naman nagbabasa naman talaga yan. For example, you're asking for nagbabasa ba kayo ng Bible or nagpipray. Some of them nagbabasa yan, some of them are not. Don't make, yung, yung hindi po nagbabasa, don't make them feel na they are undervalued or hindi sila worthy to be part of your team, parang ganun. Yes, i-recognize mo yung, yung nagbabasa and then you encourage the other one na I, I, ano, ako I personally as your disciple, mas magiging happy sana ako kung Um, gagawin mo yung part mo rin as a, as a disciple. Yan po. Yan po. Ito yung pa talaga style natin, no? Kasi it, it is out of our personal. <coughs> ano naman ang personal style? Para sa akin, ang ginagawa ko po sa aking mga disciple, I ask them honestly. Okay? Kung ano po gusto kong itanong talaga sa kanila, I ask them. Basta po talaga ng Bible, if sabi po nila, yes, So doon po, tama, i-appraise natin sila. At samahan natin sila magbasa ng Bible. 
yan po eh, hanapan po natin ng paraan para po uh, magkaroon sila ng time po ano po yung hindi nila nagagawa. Okay po, nakapag-training uh, ba sila? Hindi po sila nakapag-training. Tawag na mag-training nila. Parang ganun po eh. Kailangan po natin samahan sila sa mga bagay na hindi po, hindi po nila nagagawa para hindi po sila ma-offend. Kuya Arjun, pakipasa mo nga itong uh, uh, comment. Lagyan na rin natin ang question yan no? from Teacher Mitch. Ah, po. Sige po. From Teacher Mitch Jimenez Castillo po, last week's message says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. Pag okay naman kasi tayo, wala tayong issue sa inspection. Pero pag medyo may takot dahil may something, doon may hesitance sa pagtatanong ng designer. Yan po. Okay. Was there a point in time that you experienced na naging hesitant ka? Kasi yung lion trainer mo, yung disciple mo, ay on point. Medyo natabla ka ng onte. Paki-share mo yung personal experience mo nung nangyari yan. Anyone can take the floor. Um, sige po, kayo po muna. <laughs> uh, ako po, Pastor. Parang nangyari na po sa akin yan several years ago. Siguro po mga 2015 po siguro yun. Yun yung time na yung feeling ko naglalaylo ako sa ministry, sa church, ganyan. And every time na tatanungin ako kung kumustahin ako ng mentor ko, si Kaya Joseph, parang ayo ayo kahit mag-sin niya, parang ayoko mag-sin sa mga chat niya eh. <laughs> Kasi parang nah- nahihiya ako, parang natatakot ako kung ano yung sasagot ko sa kanya. Tsaka parang, so parang yung nangyari, parang spin zone mo lang siya lagi. Ako po. <laughs> ayun, parang ayun, feeling ko po kasi na-disappoint ko siya eh nung time na yun eh. So ano naman yung ginawa ni Kuya Joseph noon para ayan. maka-breakthrough sa'yo? Uh, ayan, thankful po ako kasi kahit sobrang inconsistent ko talaga noon nung time na yun, siya, at tuloy-tuloy pa rin siya, sobrang consistent pa rin niya sa pag-invite sa akin, pangungusta sa akin, tinatawagan niya pa ako. Ayun, kaya ano, yun talaga yung naging way ni Kuya para ma-win ba ako. Wow. Uh, what about you, uh, Arvin? Um, so yung mentor ko kasi si Pastor Ricky Amalingan. And knowing Pastor Ricky po, very straight to the point po yan magtanong. Talaga pong, kung ano yung word, yun talaga yung gagamitin yung word without sugarcoating the word. So ngayon, um, there were times yun nga na, na ay, wala akong balak talaga i-share sa kanya. Pero dahil sa, pagt- sa very creative siya magtanong, sometimes siya mismo nakakahuli nyo. So... Um, ang maganda lang po uh, very kaya sa discipler kung mahuli man yan yung yung malimang yon eh hindi kanya hindi kanya hindi niya papafeel sa yung condemnation na parang yes you you did the right uh, you did the wrong thing pero hindi ako galit sa yo galit ako dun sa nagawa mo ayun po yung maganda po sa akin sampulan mo nga ako ng creative na question uh, ano ba? For example, uh, may nakita po siya, may nalaman po siya, no? Ganito po yung follow-up question yan. Kailan yan? Saan yan? Saan, uh, sino mga kasawa niya dyan? Yung mga ganun. Anong nangyari? Mga ganun po. So, wala ka nang kawala kung di ikuwento. Uli. Hindi. Ano po ako yung ikuwento niya po? Di ba yung sinasabi natin kanina eh? Sometimes as a disciple, you have to take two roles. One is you are a counselor, or sometimes you need to be an inspector. So, engineer, ikaw naman. Was there a time that you were fully experienced ka ba yan? Actually, ano naman po, si Pastor Toto po ang aking discipler. So, padalas po ang tinatanong po niya sa amin is how to upgrade ourselves. Okay? So, dun po siya nagtatanong madalas kung dun po siya nag inspect kung saan po kami papunta ayan, sa mga dinidisciple po ni Pastor Toto. So, takot po. Wala naman pong takot. Kasi sa mga pinag naman, pinagkukwentuhan naman, nagdidiscussan naman po namin nila, Pastor. Very open naman po kami sa lahat. Okay, kung mayroon mga problema na pwedeng i-share, open naman po kami sa lahat. So, ayun po. 
Hindi po kami natatawa at mag-share kasi si Pastor po very understanding disciple po siya. Okay, now, let's go to this next question. Ito, maganda to. How can we be creative in discipling a person who's always seen Sony and inconsistently attending discipleship? Yan, yung parang experience ko yung Marvin, no? Paano natin siya creatively i-approach? Lalo pa pag seen Sony na lagi tayo. Um, ako po, okay lang po mag-share. Okay, okay. Patrick na Para sa akin po, sa umpisa po is, hayaan po muna natin sila. Para sa akin po. Sa aking opinion po, mga yung mga disciple po talaga na naglalaylo, okay po. Pag nagsisinsong po sila sa ating mga chat group or sa ating mga discipleship um, group, hayaan po muna natin sila sa umpisa. Let them, pero let them feel na nandiyan pa rin po tayo para sa kanila. Pwede po natin sila PM, personal message, kamustahin intentionally kung ano pong nangyayari sa kanila pag nagiging inconsistent po sila. Okay. Arvin. Okay. Ano uh, thank, thank you po ulit at uh, thank you po ulit Ate Shim for that question. So, ako po I believe uh, there's no reason naman para hindi ka reply and especially if, you're, if you have good motive. Ngayon, what you have to do, siguro one of the mistake na nagagawa natin as, as a discipler, um, whenever we uh, communicate sa ating disciples, wag po, wag po laging about the discipleship, wag laging about the uh, yung seryoso. You, sometimes you have to ask kung ano rin yung mga hobbies nila. Like for example, are they uh, an athlete or cyclist ba sila? Mga ganun ba yung mga hobbies nila? So sometimes you have to ano rin, parang iparamdam rin sa kanila na you care kung ano rin yung mga ginagawa nila. In that case, um, hindi po sila mag-hesitate na replyan ka whenever you chat them or you message them. Okay. So let's move to the next question. Ha? Medyo dumadami na eh. Okay. Um, ang bago tong question, may mga comments tayong pwedeng matignan. So as we grow in God's word, malawak ang ating isipan at tumatatag ang ating loob sa pag-handle ng mga bagay na nakakap na nababawas bawasan ng feeling of being offended. Kasi yung being offended talaga minsan nangyayari sa atin. Eh. And also, the same person, magkaroon talaga ng panahon na masakit ang mga pagkatanong para itama ang mali. Sometimes we have to be direct, but again, depende yan sa personality ng person. Sometimes we have to go around and then go directly. Kala ko yung cyber ko, style niya, pinapakain niya kami. So, then, pagkatapos nun, mag-iikot na ng mga tanong yan. And then, pag nagtanong yan, lag, pulong ka na. Huli ka na talaga. So, another question from um, Ate Amin. Yan. And uh, Ate Amin, pakibati po ng happy birthday sa Kuya Simon. Birthday. 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 birthday po, Kuya Sai. Birthday niya rin. Ate Becky rin, I happy, happy birthday. And also si Ate Jean Eason, happy birthday din from Boraca. Now, ito ang tanong. Um, hello po. Yeah. Ask lang po may boundary in terms of closeness po kaya sa relationship ng disciple at disciple. Paul, thanks. The boundary, closeness. Sige, so anyone would like to share? Yan, sige, engineer. Para sa akin po, yung boundary na tinatawag po ay yung respect. Ayan po. Sana po ma-address pa rin bilang isang disciple, disciple maker, yung mga dinidisciple natin. Magkaroon po tayo ng respeto sa isa't isa. Doon ko po masasabi na yun po dapat yung maging boundary natin sa kanila, ang respeto ko. Arvin, anything that you like to say? Oh. Ako po, I believe uh, that uh, supposed to be wala sa ng limit. Um, anong difference lang is, iba-iba kasi yung personality ng disciples natin. There are some, for example, like me po, kay Kuya Ricky, very open po ako sa kanya, lahat po, kinukwento ko po sa kanya. And there are some disciples na merong medyo private po sila, ayaw po nilang i-share lahat 
ng mga kasalawabin po nila. So, uh, ako po, I believe there should be no limit, but it depends po doon sa person na, or sa disciple po na hinahandle po nila. Hey, Arvin, just a follow-up question. How did you come to the point na naging transparent ka na kay Kuya Ricky? Yung kahit na hindi siya um, nagtatanong, um, maamin ka na. Um, ano ba? Ako po kasi personally, very outspoken po talaga ako eh. So, to be honest, hindi na po siya ganong nahirapan talaga po to connect with me. So, ako po, I believe it's on the person's personality po talaga. Pero, ang maganda lang po kay Kuya Ricky is he's very hospit- uh, hospitable, very, ano po siya, open po siya. So, sa lahat po ng mga sinashare ko sa kanya, eh, willing naman po siya to listen and mag uh, samahan po ako dun sa journey ko po na By the way, before po Marvin answer the question, two last questions na lang po tayo, mahabol po tayo, and then uh, we will have this as a close. So, Kuya Marvin, ano masasabi mo? Uh, sa, para sa akin po kasi, there's a time na bilang yung relationship niya as disciple-disciple. Uh, pwede kayong as a friend, as a best friend, as a kuya. There's a time na ganun, sobrang close nyo, pero... Dapat there's a time din na uh, nandun yung authority mo pa rin to correct them pag nagkakamali sila, nire-respeto ko nila as a mentor. Ayan, uh, parang balance lang. May time na sobrang close kayo, may time na na ina-acknowledge nila yung pagka-mentor mo. Okay, to add to our discussion, maybe uh, Arvin, pwede pakibasa mo to comment from Teacher Mitch. Okay, from Teacher Mitch po, as disciples, we need to respect God ourselves and others as we do that we will always be aware of our own limits and boundaries kinakailangan talaga maging aware tayo now this is the second to the last question from kuya jason de los santos uh, Mar- marvin pwede pakibasa mo yung tanong kasi para sa tatlo sa inyo to eh ganun mo sagot yun question po from kuya jason Uh, question for Arvin, Patrick, and Marvin. How do you handle your time when it comes to busy work over your time in discipleship or mentoring group? Okay, so Marvin, since you have read the question, you can start answering the question. Uh, siguro kung paano na lang namin hinahandle nito sa discipleship group namin with Kuya Joseph. Uh, hinahanap niya yung common day and time namin lahat kung kailan talaga available kasi most of us talaga working na working uh, working from home iba kung mapasok talaga physically pero there's a uh, there's a time talaga na masiset na available halos lahat ayan Arvin uh, Arvin sorry Okay, ako naman po, um, there were times po talaga na hindi nagtatagpo yung schedule po namin ng mga disciples ko. So what I actually do is, um, pag meron po akong free time talaga, ako po yung uh, nag initiate na kahit one-on-one po, kahit isa-isa po sila na tuturuan ko, um, okay lang po as long as ang mahalaga po doon is lahat po sila mamit ko for that week po. So kahit sometimes, kahit hindi po sama-sama, ako po um, nag, 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 uh, intentionally lumalapit na po ko one-on-one. Kasi ang maganda rin po with one-on-one, mas na mas na ano mo po eh mas ah uh, dito mas natutukoy mo kung ano yung pangangailangan ng isang disciple mo and sometimes some of them ayaw nilang mag-share pag within na group so sometimes may mga nalalaman ka na kapag one on one lang kayo yun po yung maganda po engineer para sa akin naman po um pinakamagandang paraan po para sa mga busy person is to tanungin po natin yung magandang uh, time para po sa ating mga disciple. Kung meron po sa anilang mga common na oras para po mag-gather natin sila lahat, mas okay po. Pero kung meron, kung meron po tayong mga disciple na sa uh, 7, to 8, 7 to 5 ang kanilang time sa trabaho, pwede po natin sila i-meet ng mga 9 p.m. Habang nagpapahinga, turuan po natin sila. Habang nagpapahinga po sila bago po sila rin matulog, para po sa kanilang next day duty, bigyan po natin sila ng time para po magkaroon po tayo ng uh, discipleship uh, time para po sa kanila. So hanapan lang po talaga natin ng oras, ang mga taong busy po dyan, um, have time. Hanapan na po natin sila ng oras dyan. Yeah, tsaka isasuggest ko rin, since some people are busy at work, 
siguro maganda na i-respect din natin yung time nila. When we say it's uh, 45 minutes, let's stick to 45 minutes. Uh, or let's say if it's one hour, then it should be one hour. Maganda nga sana kung halimbawa group uh, discipleship to, may timer kayo para talaga na monitor yung time. Because if you respect everyone's time, they will also come back and back again because they know that you value them. For our last question, palapakan po natin ang last question na to. From Pastora Beth. Marvin, pwede pakipasa? Uh, question from Pastor Beth pala yan. Pwede rin po bang mag-correct ang disciples sa kanilang disciple? Kung pwede po, paano? Para sa akin po. Ah, sige po, si Jr. Patrick. Para sa akin po, pwede. Pwede po natin, pwede po natin i-correct ang ating mga disciple. Uh, kasi po, relationship po nga yung pinibuild natin eh. So kung meron po tayo talagang nakita na para sa tingin natin ay hindi po talaga tama, pwede natin sabihin sa kanila yon Kuya, uh, meron pong gustong i-share sa inyo. And kung magsasalita po sa, tayo sa ating mga disciple, yun nga po, sabi ko po kanina, lagyan po natin ng respeto. Okay? With respect pa rin po kung paano natin i-share yung ating nakitang hindi uh, kaayaan sa kanila. Ah, uh, bigyan po natin ng oras para po ma-meditate natin kung tama po ba yung sasabihin natin or baka galit lang tayo sa ating disciple kaya natin gustong hanapan kung ano yung mga mali sa kanila. Okay? So bigyan po tayo, bigyan po natin ng uh, oras mag-isip kung ano po yung paano po natin sila i-correct ang ating mga disciple with respect. Ayun po. Okay, Arvin? Yes po, pwede po natin i-correct po si discipler. Just don't make him or her feel na you're above you're above him or her. Parang uh, paramdam mo pa rin na uh, yun nga, yun yung engineer Patrick na nandun yung respect. And at the same time, yung approach po natin is uh, medyo ano pa rin po, yun in a, in a right way pa rin po. Parang gumagalang ka sa isang parent. And um, wag mo po siyang parang papakailaman na parang ito yung dapat mong gawin, ganun. You just, uh, sabihin mo lang po yung feedback or yung, yung napansin mo na, Kuya, I think uh, ito pong part na to is hindi po tama. And I, ito po yung mga suggestions ko na kahit po ako as a person or as your disciple na nakikare po sa inyo, I t- tingin ko po ito po yung dapat mong natin gawin. Marvin. Uh, definitely po, pwede po talaga. Uh, parang in relation din po dun sa verse sa uh, Proverbs 25 ay 27 verse 5 yung an open rebuke is better than hidden love ayun uh, kung sa, napag-frame naman siya and gagawin mo siya in private ayan, pwede naman po talaga okay so with that um, maybe we can go to our final words but before that um the reason why we discussed this topic because besides being disciple, being uh, disciples, we also need to be correct or teachable disciples. And whether you are disciple or disciple, the thing is we are all accountable to our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so for our final words for tonight, let's start siguro from a uh, pinaka pinakayang uh, sino pa pinakayang sa atin? Pati sa akin sino pinakayang? Kuya Marvin. <laughs> ah, Kuya Marvin so from Kuya Marvin to Kuya Arvin sino mo mas uh, sino po older? Ayan. So si okay, Kuya so, Kuya Marvin engineer and then Kuya Arvin. So any final words before we come to prayer? Okay, go. Kuya Marvin. Okay po. Uh, para sa akin, gusto ko lang po magbigay ng advice para sa mga nag start pa lang bumuo ng discipleship group. Uh, I believe po kasi ang disciples are appointed by God and para siyang destiny. Yeah, tulad nung ano, si Jesus, tinawag niya sila Peter. Hindi yun nagkataon lang. Nakatakda talaga yun na sila talaga yung 12 disciples niya. 
Uh, tulad din sa atin, ganun din. And another one is the timing. Right timing talaga. Kung kailan ibibigay ni Lord yung disciple mo. Uh, I remember kasi uh, five years, five years na yata ako nag-church sa FJC bago ako nagkaroon ng sarili kong disciples. Eh, at noong time na yun, parang nadi-discourage na ako na parang tagal ko na nag-serve pero wala pa rin akong dinidisciple. Ayun, niremind sa akin ni Lord na na pag ready ka na, I'll give it to you. Ayun yung parang sinabi sa akin ni Lord sa one of one of my devotions. Kaya, remember nga si Jesus nga got his disciple 30 years old na siya. And there's a time for everything talaga. Okay, next. Engineer Patrick? Um, para sa akin po, as early as now, build your discipleship. Okay? So, hindi po natin maayos ang ating sarili hanggat wala pong tumitingin sa atin sa ibaba. Kung wala pa tayong dinidisciple na tao, hindi po natin talaga aayusin ang ating sarili. Para po sa feeling na meron po tayong mga inaalaga ang tao at alam po natin na meron po tayong kaagapay sa buhay. Ayun po. Okay, hey, Arvin. Um, for those people po na wala pang discipler, ako po ay encourage you to be part of one of our faith group po, wedding online or kung mag back to normal po lahat, we hope na you continue your journey po. For those people naman po na uh, may discipler na and some of them, ay, they feel na hindi pa sila deserving or hindi pa sila capable to have their own disciples, ako po ay encourage you na it takes um, practice then, it takes um, time, it takes um, experience then. Kasi sa, there were times po talaga na may mga, disi- mga disciples po tayo na hindi na nagpapatuloy. But don't ever get discouraged po. Some, um, hindi naman po yun dahil po sa inyo, but sometimes it's for uh, sila po yun, yung nasa kanila naman po yun. So ngayon po, for those people naman po na meron ng dinidisciple, ako po ay, I encourage you na magpatuloy po. I know po hindi mahira, uh, mahirap po ang pagdidisciple. Sometimes, uh, time mo na lang for yourself time mo lang for your family or work or any other hobbies that you have but sometimes kailangan mo pang ibigay po sa kanila and sometimes um, pwede rin sometimes kahit yung finances nagbibigay po tayo sa kanila kung kailangan talaga nila like for example nung kibuhin po po kanina so yun po wag po kayong mapapagod and don't ever forget po na ang reward po natin is in heaven naman po Ayan. thank you for your argument for that and really that as we disciple others we are rewarded by God. So, to, uh, to end all of our discussion tonight, siguro I can may ask uh, Adrian Patrick to end us in prayer. Sipo, um, pikit natin ang ating mga mata. At isipin po natin ang ating mga disciples. Let's pray for them. Sipo, let's pray. Heavenly Father, papasalamat po kami sa oras na ito sa aming mga natutunan. Kaya niyo po Panginoon na uh, tulungan niyo po kami para po mahandle po namin ng maayos ang ating aming mga dinidisciple. Lord, ask, give us the wisdom, the right questions, um, ang tamang sagot po sa kanilang mga katanungan. Tulungan niyo po na mas ma-build pa po namin yung relationship namin sa inyo, Panginoon. Uh, palalimin niyo po ang aming fundasyon, Panginoon, sa aming pananampalataya sa inyo, Panginoon. And we have to be sa lahat pa po na wala pa pong mga dinidisciple, um, pakita niyo po sa kanila yung puso ng isa pong shepherd na gusto pong mag-alaga ng isang tupa. Maraming salamat po, God, for this opportunity na binigay niyo po sa amin to share, Panginoon, itong mga salita nito. Lord bless us indeed. Ingatan niyo po ang bawat isa, ang mga bawat disciple po at discipler na gumagawa po, Panginoon, ang bawat niyo. Salamat po, Panginoon, ito. Ito sa inyo pray. Amen. Again, thank you for your time, Kuya Marvin from Cavite. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for your time, Kuya Arvin from San Pedro. And thank you for your time, Kuya Patrick from from Bolivia. Again, this is our group signing off. And we believe that God has something for you. Let's believe that He is a God of impossibilities. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible for you Darkness are open Strongholds are broken I'm living up for you Nothing is
es imposible. Sunday, sama-sama tayo sa ating Sunday services, 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. On Mondays at 7 p.m. via Zoom, learn with us through our FLIE classes. At dahil tayo ay one faithful, join Faithful Tuesday Family Altar by using the material that will be posted on our Facebook page. Sabayan nyo rin ang church sa daily 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m. at 9 p.m. prayers. At dahil malakas magpray ang faithful, let us end this worship and training service with a prayer. Lord, thank you for another night for developing and strengthening our faith. Continue to guide us as we follow you every day. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, faithful. Again, this is Cheska and see you next week.